Hi, we'll create a burning fire animation using the CC Mr. Mercury effect. I'll start by creating a full HD composition. Now we need to create a shape that will cover the entire composition. I'll simply double click the rectangle tool icon, which will automatically create a rectangle. I'll rename it to fire. Next, I'll go to effects and presets and add CC Mr. Mercury. This effect is used to create smooth animations that resemble liquid. It works by simulating the movement of liquid particles. Now we need to adjust a few parameters. Animation, set to jet. Reverse gravity since fire rises upwards. Gravity, minus 0.5. Set radius X and Y to 2. Velocity, 0.5. This slows down the particle movement. Birth rate, 0.2. Blob death size, 0. Blob birth size, 0.7. After adjusting these parameters, the effect starts to look like flames. Let's move to other parameters, in the light section. Set, light height, minus 100. Shading diffuse and specular to zero. Now we can adjust the colors. I'll duplicate the fire layer, change its color, and in CC Mr. Mercury, reduce blob birth size to 0.5. This will make the fire smaller. I'll duplicate the layer again, reduce blob birth size to 0.3, and change the color again. When we want to change the position of the fire, standard moving of the layer will not do anything. It does not matter whether we select all layers or just one. We can change the position of the fire in the CC Mr. Mercury effect, in the producer parameter. However, moving this parameter on one layer, the others do not move automatically. To change this, we will create a simple expression. First, let's lock this effect so that it is visible. In the Fire 2 layer, we need to find the CC Mr. Mercury effect and the producer parameter. Next to this parameter, we will find a spiral icon, which we will connect to the same parameter in the first layer. Let's do exactly the same with the Fire 3 layer. Now, by moving the producer parameter in the first layer, we change the position of each layer with Fire at the same time. We all know fire emits light, so let's add an effect like deep glow to the flames. If you don't have it, you can use the standard glow effect. Adjust the parameters as needed. Then copy the effect to the other layers. You can also adjust the glow intensity, for example. I'll set it to 0.01 for the second layer and do the same for the first. Let's create the wood. For this, I'll use the pen tool to draw a shape resembling a piece of wood. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll adjust the color. Next, I'll create a texture on the wood using the pen tool to draw lines running through it. Remove the fill, add stroke a slightly darker color than the wood, with a thickness of 4. We will create a mask using track map by linking to the wood layer. If the wood layer's visibility turns off, just enable it again. I'll duplicate the wood layer and, using the ellipse tool, 
draw a circle at the end. Remember to check the option to create a mask using shape. The color should be lighter since the inside of the wood is brighter. I'll add a spiral inside by drawing it with the pen tool. To make the spiral's end sharp, I'll adjust the taper. Start and end parameters and stroke. We will create a mask using track map by linking to the wood layer. I'll create a pre-composition from these layers. You can place the pre-composition below all the layers. I'll set the anchor point to the center and position the wood on the scene. Duplicating and rotating it as needed. Once we have the first row of wood ready, we will need wood that will lie on top. After doubling it, we will just have to gently rotate it, position it in the right place and scale it a bit. Let's add a branch on the other side of the fire, which means we need to move the layer above the fire. Now I will add some shadows under our wood. Use the pen tool to draw a shadow. Add fill and remove stroke. Apply the Gaussian blur effect. Blur, 100, repeat edge pixels unchecked. Link the shadow to the corresponding wood layer using a mask. We can change the layer blending to light. No, but I will set it to overlay. I'll repeat this process for the other pieces of wood, adjusting their position and scale. Once we have that done, we need to add a similar shadow to the wood that is on top. Maybe I'll change the color so that the wood has more of a warm, red tone. One more piece of wood and the shadows are done. I think we might not even be able to create a mask with fire, so I'll turn it off and see how it looks. This should create a shadow under the wood, not just on it. And that's it, we have our fire. Finally. I'll add a background in my case, it's a campsite image. If the fire isn't visible in the first frame, simply move the fire layer slightly to the left on the timeline. If you'd like more tutorials, leave a comment, like, and share your support helps the channel grow.